Nolem and Hold'em, Nolem and Hold'em, Nolem and Hold'em. It seems like everywhere I turn on YouTube poker right now is Nolem and Hold'em hand being talked about, being discussed, down. I see Doug Polk out there making all the videos, helping people out, get better at poker, even introducing the game of poker to more people around the world. And I want to bring the great game of Potlum in Omaha to more people here in 2017. So I decided we're going to look at some Pot Limit Omaha hands. We're going to do some other PLO related content this year. And we're starting off with one of the most infamous PLO hands of all time here on, on YouTube. And it's a hand between Patrick Antonius and Andrew Robel. Now, I think most people that play PLO have seen this hand. And we're going to talk about this hand a little bit more. But Patrick Antonius and Andrew Robel are playing $500, $1,000 blinds. And they start the hand off with about $130,000 effectively. And Patrick Antonius opens up five, six, eight, nine of diamonds in the cutoff to pot. Five, six, eight, nine, a very standard open. And in late position, you're going to be able to play a lot of hands. This is definitely the type of hand that you're going to want to play. Robles in the small blind. He's got ace, queen, queen, jack with the ace, queen of spades, which is a, a relatively strong hand, pretty strong hand from the small blind. Most people aren't going to want to be calling too much from the small blind. I feel like nowadays, this is back in 2009, in 2016, 2017, People want to see flops, so they're a little bit more apt to call from the small blind. But a lot of people also choose a strategy where they just 3-bet from the small blind, especially when they're 100, 150 big blinds, or even less effective deep. So he decides to 3-bet, and Patrick pretty much has a, a very easy call in position. Basically, my approach is, if I, if I open a hand pre-flop, if I make a raise and somebody 3-bets me and I'm, posi I'm in position, I'm never folding. So he, ahead, he goes ahead and calls, and we see a flop. This is a spot in Potlum in Omaha where players are almost always going to call a re-raise in position if they open raise like Antonius did. And he loves this spot with position. Four, ace, seven on the flop. And this is just a monster flop for Antonius. He has a flush draw and a wrap straight draw. Robel just has ace, queen here. He does not have two pair. Remember, he only uses two cards in his hand, so he's got ace-queen. You can see Antonius almost a three-to-one favorite with his draw. So it looks pretty, but it's not necessarily pretty. 16,000 to bet from Robel. How much do you have? How, how much do you play? Like, do you have any? Antonius could catch a three, a five, a six, an eight, or a diamond to take the lead. I expect him to put in a raise. All right, so let's talk about this. So flop comes ace seven four with ace four diamonds. Andrew Robo flops top pair, a backdoor flush draw, a backdoor straight draw, and two backdoor quad draws. Patrick Antonius has a monster hand. He's got a wrap and a diamond draw. So as Bart Hansen said in the commentary, any three, five, six, eight diamond giving him a, give him an immediate uh, immediate better hand. And that of course is if Andrew Robo doesn't have higher diamonds in his hand. So in this situation, I feel like the hand is all relatively standard up until this point. Andrew Robel makes a very normal continuation bet. That's two thirds pot. And now Patrick Antonius asks him, how much do you have? And the reason he asks him, how much do you have is he wants to know how much his opponent is behind. I think if Andrew Robel has about 300 big blinds or 400 big blinds, Patrick Antonius is just gonna call here because he doesn't wanna get that much money in. And I think if he's shorter stack, he's going to decide just to raise, take advantage of his fold equity, get Andrew Robel to fold some of his uh, aces that don't have a flush draw, some of his maybe king hands, maybe he has a blocker with a king high flush, king, high, a king, king, something, something diamond with one diamond in his hand. I think overall, it's just a very standard play in Patrick's spot. He's got a strong hand. When he gets called, he's never in very bad shape. And... And when he gets, sometimes he'll get called and he's just dominating. And also he's going to get folds and he doesn't mind getting folds in this spot. Now it's back to Randy Robel. And this kind of is one of these spots in PLO that really comes down to, to the math. And, and what you kind of do in this situation is you, you want to look at your hand and then you want to put your opponent on a type of range. And how I usually work on these type of hands, and I don't really know if this might scare a lot of people out there, but there's something called math in, in poker, and especially math in PLO and spots like this is extremely important. Now I'm going to introduce you guys to one of my favorite things I've probably used for thousands of hours in my Popman Omaha career, which is Pro Poker Tools. And basically, this is a, a, a program, a software, a site where you put in the board, you put in your hand, and you put in what you project that your opponent's range is going to be, and then it tells you what your equity is against that type of hand. So in this type of spot, we have the luxury of being able to do this now. Andrew Robel has to do this 
in his head. So I, I think Patrick Antonis is going to have a hand like an ace seven here, ace four, sometimes pocket seven, sometimes uh, the naked king high flush draw, sometimes an ace with uh, two diamonds, like an ace ten nine with ten nine of diamonds type of hand. I think he's going to sometimes have a wrap, sometimes have a sometimes have a combo draw like a wrap plus a flush draw like he has, and uh, sometimes he'll have a hand. Like a bottom set. I don't think he's going to have 7-4 too often. But yeah, I don't think he's going to really gonna have 7-4 too often. Although I'd be curious to see what he does with a 7-4. But I think most of the hands that he opens up preflop that have a 7 and a 4 in them are also going to be two other cards that are somewhat connected that will give him a, a gut shot straight draw in this type of situation. So basically, when I start off trying to figure out what my opponent's range can be. I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm not going to list every hand. I'm going to keep it simple to get a little base idea of what type of equity I need in a spot like this. As you can see in this spot, we put in a couple hands and it's not looking good for Andrew Robel. In a spot like this, he needs 39% to make the call. He's getting 33%, 31% here in some of these uh, basic simulations. Even against the hand like an ace 10 X with a 10 of diamonds and X of diamonds, he still has 33%. But basically what that means is that he's often going to get his money in pretty bad here. And he's really never getting his money in good. And he's never getting his money in good in terms of uh, getting the price he needs. And he's really never getting his money in. I mean, I don't know. I, it's, it's just a spot where, where I feel like it's an easy fold. But what happens with PLO players sometimes is they get a little blinded by... They get a little blinded sometimes. You see a hand like ace, queen, queen, jack. You got ace, queen, a spades here. The flop has one spade. You have a queen of diamonds in your hand. And you're just like, you know what? Maybe my opponent, might be he's out of line. Maybe he's got a hand like a jack 10, 9, 8 with jack 10 of diamonds in his hand. He just wants to get me to fold. Especially in a game where you can run it twice. Sometimes your opponents are going to take advantage of that by, by raising a little bit lighter. Knowing that when they get called, it's okay. We can run it twice. Now, whether Patrick would do that in this case, I don't really know. But I think a lot of times that people might overestimate what their opponent's hand is. And I think in this spot, in Andrew's role spot, he says, I got the queen of diamonds. I block one of the diamonds. I got a backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw. You know what? I'm going to go with the hand. Patrick's an aggressive player. And um, he just decides to go with the hand. So, so now I think this is definitely a mistake. I don't necessarily think it's a massive mistake, but it is going to be a pretty big losing mistake. And especially in big spots like this where you're getting in over 100 big blinds, you want to be on the right side of the math. More often, you want to be on the wrong side of the math. He's going to do a little bit of Hollywooding here, but this is a relatively easy fold. Well, on. What? I love the wow. commentators. Wow. I love Bard and, and Robert Williams in the third. They're like, wow. I mean, they know what the hand's going to happen beforehand. So good acting on their part. Three times or twice, whatever you want. You can decide. Wow. Oh, let's run it three times. All right, so they're going to run it three it's times. I think it's complicated, right? <laughs> four is easier than three. Two, okay, okay, four times. Two or four, four is times easier. Is four times is better. Four times. Four times. You what get smooth as these situations. You got? We're going to run it four times, which means the pot's going to be split into four. So each time they run it, it's going to be for 25% of the pot. And Antonius is a big, big favorite here. Good call, by the way. Now Patrick gives him a little needle. He says, good call, good raise, good re-re-raise. Basically he's saying, you're a fucking idiot. Why would you ever do that play? Or could raise. Could re-raise. Re-re-raise. So... Here we go. Four Andrew's thinking in his head, please win, please win, please win. Well, Antonius needs help on the river. And a deuce. Oh, and Robo, Robo wins the gets first it. time. Wow. What? Okay, number two. And the second time. That's a uh, jack, so there's his diamond. So well, there's the flush. Oh, and an ace, and Robo gets Robo that one. Wow. There's the power oh, hits of the backdoor two pair draw. And he's won two out of four Backdoor full house draw. Should have ran it twice. And a ten of hearts. Of hearts. And again, Antonius needs help. Yeah. And a king. Yeah. And, and Robo gets it again. Unbelievable. Nuts. Remember, he was only 20. <laughs> backdoor straight draw. You're seeing them all right here. What oh, three so far. So here we go again. A three, and Antonius will make his straight. 
but look at this. Robles got a spade draw. Antonius is way out in front here. Oh! Wow, and a spade comes at the end. Running spades and Roble <laughs> wins all four runs. That is one of the most insane things I have ever seen, Barry, because Roble was only 25% to win the hand. They ran it four times, and he won all four. The chances of that happening, let me get a pen, it's less than 1%. And in the meantime, Antonio's facial expression just has not changed. Big, big hand for Robo. It reminds me from Sammy. You heard Bart Hanton say, Antonio used to do had, this uh, Or Robo had less than one percent to win that, win that hand and win all four runouts. But I think this hand is a perfect example to show people why PLO is such a great game, why it's such a fun game, and that no matter what happens, you always have a chance to win. You always have a chance to make some backdoor draws. And over the course of this year, we're going to be looking at much more PLO hands. I'll be continuing my Can I Win $500,000 on Bovada PLO series in addition to more PLO-related content. So let me know what you thought. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. I know everyone's got to ask that question on YouTube. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow.